For Darius Garland, a nagging meniscus injury and a natural adjustment to the speed and physicality of the NBA game led to an underwhelming rookie season, but he bounced back in a big way in year two. And there's reason to believe he's ready to take a sizable step forward in his third season, possibly being one of the league's breakout players. Now let's get into his game. We could start in several different places, but we'll first talk about his handle and creativity with the ball. He's pretty easily one of the shiftiest players in the league. His ability to change speed and direction is up there with the best, he's got tremendous shin angles, can stop on a dime, and he's just got the ball on a string. Draymond Green, one of the better defenders ever, said that Garland is one of his least favorite people in the league to switch out on, citing that shiftiness and unpredictability that he plays with, which is pretty high praise from a guy like Draymond. There is Garland, actually, and I know that's probably an unpopular opinion. That kid is so fast, so irky jerky, and he can shoot the ball. When he really, like, figure out how good he truly is, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough getting switched on Darius Garland. Here he snakes his pick and roll against Charlotte, getting himself into a one-on-one -on -one with Biombo. As he's snaking, he can feel Biombo come up. He gives him the little hezzy and blows right past him to get to the basket and make the tough finish. It's just a super tough move. See that back foot, the eyes and head go up like he's going to pull up. And as soon as Biz's momentum is leaning forward, he attacks. In the pick and roll again, he has Plumlee in a drop, puts his head and eyes up to sell the jumper. Plumlee sticks his hand out to contest and moves up just a little bit. And Garland takes off using that great first step and quickness. And on this one, just ignore the fact that he blatantly goes out of bounds. Rudy Gay is on an island with him, which is an automatic mismatch. He feels Rudy's hips turn and pulls back. He probably could have got a shot here with the space that he created, but he fakes the step back with his hezzy. And then it's just a foot race to the rim, which he's gonna win. 10 times out of 10. Another one of DG's favorites is the between the legs with the all important change of pace. It's just him and Hero late clock. He gives him a slow hang dribble left to set him up, only making Hero's top foot higher. He goes between the legs and attacks it hard, which forces Hero to open up his hips, and it's all she wrote from there. And also peep the off arm usage by Garland too, as Hero tries to grab him. This between the legs is definitely one of his most effective moves in a variety of situations, and it's awfully reminiscent of Dame Lillard. Dame is the absolute best at this, and all guards can take something from what he does here. He beautifully creates advantages by looking defenders off and attacking them as they rest just slightly and exploding with the between the legs dribble. And obviously for a guy like him, the threat to pull up at any time helps also. Darius and the Cavs get into the pick and roll in several different starting points, and it's definitely the area he generates the most offense out of. I really like the pace and nuance that he plays with. He excels at putting defenders in jail by keeping them on his hip or back, he knows how to snake it, and his change of speed and direction is as important here as anywhere else. He takes a little dribble hand off screen and shows off some great pace. Collins is helping down. Nance pops out and there's just a little miscommunication here between Bogey and Collins and as Collins makes just the slightest move out to Nance on the perimeter, Garland zooms for the extended finish with the right hand. He's got Mikhail on him, a really tough matchup for anybody. Mikhail plays the initial screen really well, DG sees that, he goes behind the back and Allen kind of flips it without turning around just giving him that little nudge. DG now has Allen rolling with Cam Johnson down in front of him and Mikhail recovering. He puts Mikhail in jail allowing Allen to get past Johnson and forcing a decision. He switches up the pace, hangs to get Johnson to commit to Allen, and then takes off to the bucket with a high lefty finish. And in a league where the average height is 6'6", a 6-1 vertically explosive challenge Darius Garland is great at one of the keys to being effective as a guard, and that is the floater. Also known as the giant killer, the floater is super important in the modern NBA because of the popularity of the pick and roll and the way it is often defended with drop coverage. He'll shoot the floater off of two feet or the right or left foot depending on the situation. And he's pretty creative in terms of his alignment here. 
just a guy who you can tell works on his game a ton and makes a concerted effort to add touch and play with different angles on the floor. Going off of two is often useful to control your momentum, gain power, and get better alignment on the shot. And like we said, he'll go off of the left or the right as well. I've always found it easier and more natural to go off of the right foot when headed right for floaters. And for DG, it's a lot of the same, though he is currently also one of the best in the league at going off of the left. While the floater is a much needed asset, he largely raised his play behind how often he got all the way to the bucket, finishing at 57% in the restricted area, up from just 44% in his rookie season. That is a significant jump in one year. He was visibly stronger, and he still got all those one-handed, off-foot, unorthodox finishes as a below-the-rim guy. And simply put, he made way more of them in year two. Garland's use of that floater we just talked about make the lobs and dump offs a whole lot easier as they open up his playmaking, especially in the pick and roll. I love his pairing with Jared Allen and they really had something going last year when Allen joined the team as an explosive vertical threat at the basket. I think Evan Mobley can potentially do some of these things as well, but whoever is rolling or down there in the dunker spot is going to be the beneficiary of a lead guard who has good touch, is deceptive, and is always looking to find them. This might just be my favorite Garland play so far. He sets up the screen, gets downhill with Vooch in a drop and Kobe White recovering. He tries to put him in jail, but Kobe moves, throwing him off balance and losing the ball. Garrett Temple lunges at it as he thought it was up for grabs, but Garland recovers it with his right hand. Vooch commits and he throws it to the moon for the lob in the poster dunk. And Garland can make those important reads on the perimeter as well. This one to Jetty, and the next one to Nance on the pick and pop. He's not Trey Young or Harden here, but he's only getting better and more comfortable, and I think we continue to see that progression over these next few years. He can complement a variety of play styles, and I'm excited to watch. Where you really just don't have a you know, a lot of regulars coming off that bench. When they keep the spacing and force the defenders to have to make decisions. Good Garland, man. no look. While he does a lot of damage within the pick and roll, Garland made good all around improvements as a passer. Whether it was in transition or off his own penetration, he consistently put pressure on the defense, made good reads, and really served as an artist at times. Now his flashiness did get him into some trouble from time to time, but he does a really good job of using no looks and seeing things before they develop. And for me, I'll take the mistakes that come with the flair. In a lot of these plays, he was like a painter to a canvas. It's always an energy boost to the team and it gets the crowd going. Wayne Ellington lost the handle. Wilson goes for four more. Eric and John, feel free. We'll the last area that we'll talk about is his three-point shooting ability. This is a big piece of his game and the one that makes a lot of it effective and will determine his ceiling going forward. He shot just under 40% on about five attempts, most of which came off the catch where he looked the part of a guy who can become a lethal threat on spot ups or if and when they decide to utilize his ability to shoot on the move. And then the self creation from three is where I think a lot of his overall offensive potential resides. Five attempts is solid, but De'Aaron Fox of all people takes five and a half. Garland's attempts rank 71st in the league among guards, and this is just a big part of the next step for him, because with his combination of attributes, I think he's someone who should easily be knocking on the door of 7 attempts a game, sacrificing little to no efficiency. He's got the ability to punish teams who go under, he's just gotta let it fly. Now to the next step. One of the big things for Garland going forward is just continuing to read the game better and more efficiently and minimizing the times where he allows the defense to speed him up or tries to make that highlight pass leading to bad turnover. It's just regular young dynamic guard stuff, but I think he needs to have an emphasis on it going into this season. The next and probably most important thing for him going forward is just being assertive. There are a lot of unknowns and moving parts on this current Cavs roster, but I think Garland should approach things as the engine of this team. This isn't saying Colin Sexton isn't really good or there isn't talent on this roster. Garland is just by far the best suited to be the primary ball handler, and part of what comes with that is taking advantage of all the available opportunities and seeking more out. Like there were still several times that guys would go under screens throughout the season, 
and he wouldn't look at the rim. Guys like Dame, Trey, Steph let that fly every time. Is he quite capable of being on that level yet? No, but he's worthy of more volume for sure. You saw in games against San Antonio or Orlando or Detroit where he was excellent across all facets, took star level shots, and created looks for others in a big way. That's the Garland I think we can and should see more of next year. And part of what he did in those games and what will get him to that next level is continuing to get all the way to the basket and definitely get to the line. The floater is beautiful, but we've still got to get to the line just a bit more. I know many people hate the player and not the officiating, but Garland should be watching a lot of Trey Young to see how a similarly built guard can get there 9-10 times a game over his last 120-140 games in the league. That's often the marginal blueprint that'll take his own stats up quite a bit and keep the Cavs competitive in more games than they ever expected. And finally, despite how he looked with the USA squad, hear me out, Garland is actually not horrible defensively. For the small guards in this league, the bar is set pretty low for how difficult of a job they can end up having on a night-to-night -night basis, but he's had some great moments of physicality and energy coming up with some deflections and steals. You can say maybe I'm being just a bit too positive here, but with guys like Jared Allen and Evan Mobley on the back end, and then you throw in Isaac Okoro there to help, you can really make things work and cover up some of the weaknesses that Garland has. That's not to say that he's going to be a world beater, but like for comparison's sake, I definitely think that he can be better than, than a Trey Young, for example, here in a lot of ways. Ultimately, I think things are lining up for Darius Garland to be one of the breakout stars for this upcoming season and possibly resulting in him winning the Most Improved Player Award. I think he'll have a good chance based on his terrific skill set, the progression he's been on to this point, and I'm hopeful the coaching staff will give him the reins a bit more and use his skill set in more ways. Even though they might not be the most successful team yet in terms of wins, DG the PG should shine as bright as anyone else on the Cavs. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and definitely share it. Stay tuned to the channel for more breakout breakdowns and check out the full Most Improved Candidates video if you haven't yet. I'm Keandre, this is Hoop Intellect, and I'm out.